Hi everyone, Junra from Confluent. In this module, we will take a walk inside the Kafka broker. Within the Kafka cluster, we have a separate control plane and a data plane. The control plane is responsible for handling all the metadata of the cluster, and the data plane, of course, is used to handle all the actual data. And in this particular module, I'm going to talk about how the data plane is used to handle all the client requests. There are two main types of requests each broker is handling. One is the produce request from the producer, and the other is fetch request from the consumer. Both types of requests are going through a few common steps on the broker, and then we'll go through them one by one. First, let's go through how a produce request is handled. The producer client starts by sending a record then the producer library will use a pluggable partitioner to decide which partition in this topic this record should be assigned to. If the key is specified in the record, the default partition assigner will use the key to hash into a particular topic partition deterministically and always route the records with the same key to that same partition. If the key is not specified, then this record will be selected in a round robin way for the next partition. Sending each record as itself is not going to be efficient because it has too much overhead. Instead, what a producer library does is to buffer all those records for a particular partition in the in-memory data structure, which we call record batches. Accumulating those data in record batches also allows compression to be done in a more efficient way because compressing a bunch of records together is much more efficient than compressing them individually. The producer also has control when those record batch should be drained and sent to the broker. This is controlled by two properties. One is by time, the other is by size. So once enough time or enough data has been accumulated in those record batches, those record batches will be drained and form a produce request. And this produce request will then be sent to the corresponding broker. The produce request will first land in the socket receive buffer on the broker. From there, it will be picked up by one of the network threads. Once a network thread picks up a particular client request, it will stick to that particular client for the rest of its life. Since each of the network thread is, is used to multiplex across multiple clients, the network thread is designed to only do work that's lightweighted. For the most part, the network thread just takes those bytes from the socket buffer and forms a produce request object and put that into a shared request queue. From there, the request will be picked up by the second main pool in Kafka. This is called I.O. threads. Unlike the network thread, each I.O. thread can be used to handle requests from any client. So all of those I.O. threads will be diving into this shared request queue, and they will be grabbing the next request that's available. The I.O. thread uh, will handle the produce request by first validating the CRC of the data associated with the partitions, and then it will be appending the data associated with partition to a data structure, which we call a commit log. The commit log is organized on disk in a bunch of segments. Each of the segments has two main parts, one is the actual data, this is actually where the actual data is appended into. And the second one is an index structure, which provides a mapping from the offset to the position of this record within this dot .log file. By default, the broker will only acknowledge the produce request once the data is fully replicated across other brokers, because we rely on replication to serve the purpose of durability, since we don't flush the data synchronously. While waiting for the data to be fully replicated, we don't want to tie up this I.O. thread because the number of I.O. threads is limited. Instead, what we'll do is to stash those pending produce requests into a data structure called purgatory. It's like a map. And then after that, this I.O. thread can be freed up and it can be used to process the next request. Once the data for the pending request is fully replicated, this pending produce request will be taken out of purgatory, and then a response will be generated and will be put into the corresponding request response queue for the network thread. From there, the network thread will pick up the generated response and then send the response data into the send socket buffer. The network thread, as you can see here, is also responsible for enforcing ordering of the request coming from a single client. 
So what it does is it will only take one request from a client at a time, and only after the completing of this request, when all the bytes for the response has been sent, this network thread will be able to take up the next request from that client. This is actually a pretty simple way to enforce offering uh, ordering from a particular client. Now let's take a look at how the fetch request from the consumer client is handled. The consumer client, when it sends the fetch request, it will specify the topic and partition it wants to fetch data from, and also the starting offset uh, where the data need to be retrieved. The fetch request will similarly go through the broker's receive buffer, which will be picked up by the network thread, and then the fetch request will be put into this shared request queue. What IO thread will do in this case is it will use the index structure that I mentioned earlier to find the corresponding file byte range using the offset index so that it can know which range of bytes from the second file it needs to return to the consumer. Sometimes you may have a topic that has no new data. In this case, keep returning empty result to the consumer is kind of wasteful and it's not efficient. So in this case, what a consumer can do is to specify a minimum number of bytes you need to wait for the response and a maximum amount of time it can afford to wait. So if there's not enough data, similarly to the producer request, this fetch request will be first put into a purgatory structure and to wait for enough bytes to be accumulated. So once enough bytes has been accumulated or enough time has passed, then this pending fetch request will be taken out of purgatory and the corresponding fetch response will be generated and put into the response queue. From there, the network thread will pick it up to send the actual data in the response back to the client. In Kafka, we use zero copy transfer in the network thread to transfer the range of bytes from the underlying file directly to the remote socket. This is actually pretty efficient for memory management. Normally, this process is pretty fast because the data will still be in the page cache and then the copying the data from memory to the socket buffer is pretty fast. But sometimes, if you are accessing the old data, the data may need to be retrieved from disk. This can cause the network thread to be blocked. Since the network thread is shared by multiple clients, this may delay some of the processing for other clients on this network thread. In, in one of the future uh, modules, we're going to talk about how the tier storage capability is able to address this issue to provide better isolation when retrieving data from the consumer that's on disk. This is the end of this module. Thanks, everyone.